yeah so it would be i think uh, everyone might be familiar with uh, the concept of uh, what we call it uh, sequence <clears throat> The concept of sequence and series and the limit of function, everything, everyone might be uh, aware with that. Okay, so we'll discuss in detail how uh, we have to establish uh, existence of limit and non-existence of limit. Those things we'll discuss in detail. So coming to outline of today's lecture, first I would like to discuss uh, about uh, uh, limit of, and its uh, what is its uh, sequential characterization. That means uh, sequence is always giving a very what we call practical approach to visualize limit kind of concept in a better way and it just simplify things. So that's why we are coming with the limit concept. Okay. Is it visible or not? Slide till now. Okay. Okay. Then we will discuss about once we are having enough idea about limit and it, its a sequential characterization. I will talk about uh, various law of limit. And this law of limit, just what we call it, it is coming in order to simplify the calculation of limit or simplification of limits. That's where this law will help in order to that uh, uh, complicated kind of function. We will see it here. So coming to first that uh, what is limit and uh, limit of a function and how we characterize it sequentially. That first I would like to discuss. So prior to going to the definition of limit, again I would like to recall limit point and uh, uh, while defining limit point, uh, we we are also discussing about sequence as well. So today I will talk about uh, what is the relation of limit point with respect to sequential characterization or uh, with respect to sequence. So everyone know about uh, what is limit point uh, that if you take a subset of real number, okay, A is a subset of real number and take any point c from the real number c is any real point uh, number then this point c we will call it a limit point of a if for every delta delta is again working in the same framework what we had discussed about epsilon so intensely i am taking delta there is a reason i will uh, you will see that in the process of definition of uh, limit of a function so uh, this point real number c we will call it a limit point of the given set a if there existed for every delta there exists at least one point of the set which is uh, different from c itself such that uh, uh, that x is <coughs> delta close to c we say that delta within delta uh, close within delta interval we, we say that uh, delta close to c that also you can say like that so you know that everyone what does it mean so geometrically you if you are willing to see that what does it talk about it is talking about it is an interval equality you can you can say that that x lies between uh, c minus delta and c plus delta I remember that there is one more condition that uh, x is not equal to sorry it would be c plus delta okay and there is one more condition that x should not be equal to c itself other than so another word we say that uh, other than c so that means uh, any delta neighborhood of C contains uh, uh, element of the given set A other than C. C may be in A, may not be in A. So that is the criteria. So that is the definition of uh, limit point uh, of a set that we had already discussed. So how we can uh, <coughs> visualize this from the sequential criteria? So geometrically we can further talk about this one. So if you are taking a point C, then that point C, uh, it may be a point of A or may not be a point of A. But even if it is in A, okay, always what, what is happening in the process of defining limit point, it is ignored when deciding whether it is a limit point of A or not. Because we are, we are always talking, yes, any question? Okay, uh, if there is no question, I am going forward. So if uh, in the process of defining uh, a limit point, of a set we never focus on the point itself just we focus on the point so uh, uh, all those points which are very very close to the po given point c point of the given set which are very close to c that means 
uh, as much as close you can go to, uh, towards C and in the process of going clo uh, close towards C you are getting some element of the A so that is the meaning of uh, defining a limit point that means if you take uh, any uh, delta neighborhood of C and you intersect with uh, A then you will see a uh, few point of A other than C definitely you will get, get 1.2 point and infinitely many points that is the situation uh, geometrically i have defined several times so if i we are taking a set containing only two element one and two then simply we can say that one is not a limit point because if you geometrically you are willing to visualize then one would be here and two would be here and you can always find the uh, various uh, interval one uh, various uh, delta neighborhood of one which won't contain any element of a other than one itself yes here one delta we have taken it here uh, if you take delta equal to one by two what would be interval that what would be interval it would be uh, one by two if you are taking then it would be three by two Then delta that simply I would like to just say that what would be this one uh, with this delta what would be delta neighborhood of one anyone yeah 0.5 1.5 but uh, I always like to write in uh, this uh, in this form <coughs> a rational rational form or p by p form rational form. So you uh, you can write it here, here in decimal form. There is no uh, issue. Just in order to save your space. So you can see that. Do you see any of the member of A other than uh, one itself in this uh, small interval? You don't see. That's why one is not a limit point of this given set. Likewise, also you can define a you you can find a uh, what uh, delta neighborhood of uh, uh, this uh, around two in which you will see that. Uh, uh, there is no element of a other than two itself so here one and two both are being member of the given set but are not limit point of the given set so if you uh, just uh, take a same delta then what would be interval it would be uh, 1.5 and what would 2.5 okay so here easily you can say that if you intersect this one with uh, uh, the given set a what would be intersection it would be equal to just two here i am taking neighborhood of uh, around two so in, uh, intersection would be only equal to two so if you take intersection of this interval this is the delta neighborhood uh, uh, around two delta neighborhood two with delta we have taken one by two so here intersection is just equal to two it is not uh, containing other than uh, other than two other element of two that means uh, one is not uh, in this delta neighborhood of two so that's why uh, this uh, two is also not a limit point of this set one is likewise one is also a, not a limit point of this set that you had already seen that uh, delta neighborhood of one if you intersect with uh, the given set it is also just equal to singleton set one so that's where it simply implies that one is also not a limit point of this set so both member of a is not a limit point even you can go further this set is not having any limit point we, we can show we can say that so all these are little bit uh, cumbersome job that you have to find delta neighborhood and all those kind of thing it doesn't look much uh, computational in framework that uh, more theoretical you can say that all these definition of limit point so what we do we have to try this one sequentially so what is meaning of sequence so if you sequentially we can try limit of a limit point of set like this way if we are having a real number C then we call it a limit point or cluster point both are same so a cluster point or limit point of a set a if and only if there exists a sequence <coughs> sequence of points in a that means every n must be from a okay such that that the corresponding sequence is converging to C and here each a n is different from c each a n is different from c that is the so if you take any uh, any set and you come up with a 
sequence in that set sequence of point in that set that is going to converge to some point then simply we can claim that that point would be a limit point of the given set so limit point that's why through this criteria you can say that limit point may or may not be a member of that given set so like if i am taking a set a equal to 1 by n such that n is a natural number where does 1 by n convert 0 so you are having, having a sequence so here it is just a single sequence you can say that all this point you can write in a single sequence so it is converging to 0 it is converging to 0 and 0 is not in the given set is it 0 belongs to this set it doesn't belong to yeah that's where actually here in this set we are getting a sequence actually there is only one sequence one by n that one is converging to zero but zero is not in a and as being zero uh, limit of uh, a sequence of points from the given set that's where we can say that zero is a limit point of a okay if you take another set like this one this call it a1 take another set a2 like uh, open interval 0 1 tell me uh, do you have any sequence which is converging to 1 uh, from this set a2 can you find a sequence which is converging to find a sequence a which is converting converging to uh, 1 and all the points are in the interval a2 anyone Yeah, very nice. So always you can find such kind of sequence. So you are able to find so 1 minus 1 by n. So easily you can say that here 1 minus 1 by 1, 1, 1 minus 1 by n, it is converging to 1 and every this, every 1 minus 1 by n, it belongs to the interval, open interval 0 to and it is converging to 1. So 1 is a limit point of this open interval. A2. Likewise, uh, can we say that uh, 1 by 2 is a limit point of A2? Anyone? If you take another point, like uh, if, if here C we have taken, uh, like uh, if C we have taken equal to 1 and we are claiming that 1 is a limit point of A2. Now, if I am taking C equal to 2, uh, C equal to 1 by 0.5, 1 by 2. Now, anyone may suggest what would be corresponding sequence that would converge to uh, 1 by 2 and every point would be in a2 anyone can you come up with this example of such sequence what would be an another sequence that would converge to 1 by 2 and every point would belongs to the given set a2 anyone it would be very simple take either uh, there are various sequence take uh, 1 by 2 plus 1 by n where are these members If you take n equal to 1, where does it will, it will go? n equal to 1? 3 by 2, does it belong to this A2? So, what uh, smartly you will do? What uh, smartly you will do? You take it, yeah, 1 by uh, 2n. Now, what would be? Do you face any, again, issue? Yeah, there is a issue. If you take uh, n equal to 1, then again it will some would be one and that one is not here so take three take here three one by three and so now here you can claim that if you take anything it belongs to a2 and if if i talk about what is the limit of this sequence where does it convert it converts to 1 by 2. <coughs> so <coughs> we are getting a sequence which is converging to 1 by 2 and all the points of the sequence falls in A2. So we can say that 1 by 2 is also a limit point uh, of this given set. Likewise, uh, you can construct a lot of sequence depends upon. So if you are able to find a sequence so that the corresponding sequence will converge to that point, then you can, then you can easily claim that that point would be a limit point. 
so all the these are the characterization of uh, sequential characterization of the limit point so here i have taken various other example like um, if you try to collect uh, limit point of a1 so it would be uh, a po point uh, of point from from the closed interval 0 1 so if you take any point from the closed interval 0 1 that would serve as a limit point of the open interval 0 1 okay and if you are taking any finite set then finite set will not have any limit point because finite set in finite set there are finite number of elements you can call it a1 a2 a3 like a, a n n number of capital n we are writing it okay, n number of uh, <coughs> elements are there so always you can find uh, uh, delta neighborhood around each point so that you will see that uh, that delta neighborhood is not containing any point of the set other than the point itself that means uh, always you can find v delta of ai so that if you take intersection with uh, the finite set uh, it would be just the point ai itself singleton set ai AI. so that's where so any finite set is not having uh, any limit point but also there are few infinite set like natural number or uh, integers those are also having no points so you can easily see that natural number these are natural number one two three so always you can find such kind of interval where the, those interval won't contain any point of the set itself except the uh, point itself okay so always you can find so that's where zn and, and both are having no limit point but if you come to talk about a2 like this way having point one by n where n is coming from natural number then one by n it itself it is a sequence and it is converging to zero so the limit point or uh, limit of the sequence would be corresponding limit point of the given set so that you can say that all these are sequential criteria easily you can verify now next we are going to discuss about limit of a function and we will define uh, its sequential criteria how it is so always remember that sequential criteria approach is very essential and very simple to understand so how we define uh, limit of a function so first we are taking a subset of a real number a and we are taking a, a limit point of the given set c is a limit point of the it, so that's why i had already mentioned at the beginning of this course that uh, where we try to find limit of the function that point, uh, point must be a limit point of the domain of definition what domain of definition is mentioned there okay and we are suppose we are defining a function a from uh, f from a to r and we will say that it is having a limit l and that number real number l we will call it it is a limit of the given function at c remember don't forget to call at c we are finding limit of a function at c at means just in a small level so given a, what does, so how we define so what does l would be a limit of the function f at c if uh, for every epsilon for or for any epsilon given epsilon or even simply you can say that epsilon there exists a delta that would be derived from epsilon so delta would be always function of epsilon it, it is based on epsilon okay there exists a delta such that you can say that if you are taking any point which is uh, near to delta near to c so or in the delta, delta neighborhood of c delta near to c or delta neighborhood of c you can say that uh, delta near uh, near to c uh, but other than c itself other than this uh, uh, inequality gray, it say that uh, x is not equal to c and this inequality say that uh, x it is in the uh, neighborhood of uh, c <coughs> that means x belongs to uh, and x is between c minus delta and c plus delta so there are two inequality you can see it here so one is talking about x is not equal to c and this one is talking about uh, x falls between c minus delta and c plus delta that's where and if you are taking any point from the delta neighborhood of uh, c then that implies that uh, corresponding function in epsilon neighborhood of l epsilon then we will claim that l is a limit of the function at c don't forget to miss at c okay so uh, here in this if l is a limit of the function at c then there are various simply we can say that 
the function f is converging to l at c convergence criteria is directly defined from the existence of limit and simply we write uh, notation wise the limit of function by this notation or you, see, you can denote it by this notation as well or if you want to get more explicit form also you can denote by this representation so various representation of the limit of a function you can denote it now geometrically how we can visualize you can visualize like this way always focus uh, your journey from domain to range or domain to codomain so if you take any point in the uh, delta neighborhood of c take any point from the uh, like uh, if you take a uh, any point from the uh, delta neighborhood of c then you will see that uh, the corresponding here suppose if you take x uh, here this is x in the delta neighborhood of c then you will see that corresponding f of x would be in the epsilon neighborhood of l this point is in the epsilon neighborhood of if you are taking x from the delta neighborhood of c then f of corresponding f of x the functional value it would be in the uh, epsilon neighborhood of l that is the geometrical visualization of uh, limit of a function so this one is just epsilon delta definition generally we call it but what about sequential criteria we will basically we will discuss about sequential criteria and we will see various uh, result which is based on that sequential criteria okay <coughs> so first uh, let us uh, just uh, take benefit of uh, epsilon delta game so we are claiming that we are taking a function x square x cube minus 4 divided by x square plus 1 okay and we, when uh, we are taking limit of this function uh, at 2 that means when x is approaching to 2 and we are claiming that this function will approach to 4 by 5 so how we can find through that uh, epsilon delta approach so we can in order to claim that 4 by 5 is a limit of this function so we just solve this infinity this modulus inequality absolute value inequality as simplified uh, after simplification what we object we we come to this area uh, up to this we are coming now there is a issue that we don't have taken any a specific domain of x it is not mentioned for this function so what we do uh, you always take uh, near about of 2 always take near so if you take x in near about of 2 in a very small neighborhood of 2 so one a small neighborhood with respect to delta equal to 1 take a small neighborhood what would be if you are taking delta equal to 1 what would be neighborhood delta call it delta 1 what would be v delta 1 of 4, 2 anyone what would be this <coughs> what would be this better call it uh, interval open interval 1 3 open interval 1 comma 3 may represent something else there are various names so okay, you are getting delta 1 neighborhood of 2 is oh, interval open interval 1 3 okay so over this interval easily we can say that this function if you try to see this quadratic function it is bounded above by 17 so if you easily you can verify if you are willing to verify 5 x square plus 6 x plus 12 <coughs> then easily you can verify this quantity would be what less than equal to 75 can you verify or not you do as a first homework and uh, now <coughs> yeah it is very simple result also you can verify another result 5 times x square plus 1 modulus it is greater than equal to 10 so that's way uh, we are here it is coming reciprocal that's why we are taking greater than or equal to 10 and if further it will imply if you take reciprocal the reciprocal would be less than or equal to 1 by 10 x square plus 1 if you take in modulus framework it is less than or equal to 1 by 10 so combine these two so overall this ratio is less than or equal to 70 5 by 10 and we are not just uh, playing with this one we are just keeping it so we are having we can easily say that uh, this inequality is bounded above by 75 by 10 times uh, modulus of x minus 2 okay <coughs> and you further simplify it like 15 by 2 now what we see if you focus on this one it is talking about uh, some point which is in uh, near about 2 uh, based on that we can fix here epsilon 
uh, we can put uh, come up with epsilon so here delta how delta depends upon epsilon we will see it here so one delta you have taken uh, one another delta what you do you try to make this quantity less than epsilon when it would be less than epsilon when this quantity would be less than epsilon the overall quantity when this this one this focus on it is talking about neighborhood of two when this quantity it, it would be less than uh, <coughs> 2 by 15 times 2 by 15 epsilon when this quantity is less than 2 by 15 times epsilon then overall quantity would be less than epsilon everyone with me is it clear yeah so so that that is the concept so you got another delta so never at a point we call it delta 2 so what do you do uh, in order to uh, find the bound of this uh, this term uh, bound of this term and to find this relation with epsilon we are taking delta which would be minimum of these two so this one is delta 1 this one is delta 2 which would be minimum of these two why we are taking minimum or in minimum? because in that case the both infinity this infinity and this infinity will serve uh, call it two uh, if you are taking minimum of these two uh, these two delta one delta two then this infinity will serve also this will be true if you are taking minimum of that 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 would be intersected region that i would like to say that so it is like this way <coughs> Here two and uh, uh, here one you are taking two minus delta one two plus delta one another you are taking uh, this one is two minus delta two at this point is two plus delta two usually you can say that if you take minimum of these two what would be you will get intersected rigid <coughs> That, that would be true for both equality so that's why we are taking minimum of that and if you are taking any x in the in this uh, delta neighborhood then definitely it will imply that uh, this modulus is less than epsilon what does it and it is true for any epsilon it is true for any epsilon and hence we can claim that 4 by 5 e it is a limit of this function at point 2 that is the epsilon delta you may find it a little bit boring like establishing all these but uh, I will go that's where next sequential. So here take another function 1 by x. Then if you talk about this function and if you try to establish uh, non-existence of limit of this function at 0, then you have to do a lot of things here in epsilon delta game. There would be no delta such that if you take a point for um, 0 neighborhood of delta neighborhood of 0, then uh, we want to get any delta for any for given epsilon we won't get any delta which satisfies this inequality so that's when it is always false there is no delta such delta is satisfying this inequality that's why we simply we say that 1 by x is is not having limit at x equal to 0 why another criteria is saying that 1 by x is unbounded in the small neighborhood of 0 okay if you take in a <coughs> small as possible 1 by x would be unbounded in any a small neighborhood of zero that's where this function is not having uh, limit point but it doesn't look much concrete it is not visible to us uh, why limit was not existing here so let us go to discuss about sequential criteria there you will see visibility so what does sequential criteria say that so suppose again we take a subset of real number and c happens to be a limit point of a then uh, we are having a function f defined from a to r and we will say that l is a limit point of the given function f at the point c if every sequence which is going to converge to c and containing point other than c the corresponding sequence f of xn we know that xn is a sequence and f is defined xn is a sequence and all the points of xn terms coming from a and a is the domain of the function so f f of xn would be also a real number it, it is a defined quantity and for each term of xn we are getting f of xn and hence if xn is a sequence then f of xn is also a sequence okay so we will say that f is <coughs> converging to l or f is having limit l at c if for any sequence every sequence which is converging to c 
the corresponding sequence f of xn is converging to l then we will say that l is the limit of this sequence this is the sequential criteria and we will see how beautiful this result is here okay and uh, this one is defined of uh, being a limit of a function and this second one we are talking about negation of uh, the first one that means uh, when a number l it would be not a limit of the given function when it would be or when the function will not have a limit so what is how we we can uh, come up with that so if we are having a we come up with a sequence which will converge to c but the corresponding sequence f of xn is not converging to any point in that case we will say that that function is not having limit this one is negation of first one so you can say that 2 is what it is just equivalently you can say that it is negation of of uh, first one negation generally we denote it by this negation of first one that means we are if we, we are able to find a sequence uh, <coughs> which is converging to c but corresponding sequence f of functional sequence f of xn is not converging to any point in that case we are saying that the given function is not having any limit so that is the so that's why sequence criteria is more suited for non existence of limit so one example here uh, same take uh, here <coughs> function 1 by x and we are trying to find limit of this function at 0 so 0 is the <coughs> what a limit point of the domain of this function so we know that uh, there exists a sequence 1 by n which is converging to 0 this one is converging to 0 but if you try to find f of x and what would be that that would be 1 by 1 by n so in over it would be n so what about convergency of this one whether this sequence is converging or not the sequence f of x n equal to n whether it is converging or not anyone no because it is a highly increasing sequence so it will go infinity blow up there is a blow up so it it would approach to infinity when n tends to infinity that's why we are getting a divergent sequence corresponding functional sequence is diverging so that's why from there easily we can conclude that limit of function at zero doesn't exist so that is the simple i will go to take more complicated kind of function so <coughs> just to take signum function in short we also we are calling it sine function generally we denote it by sgn so if you are willing to find limit of this signum function in the neighborhood of zero at zero then it also doesn't exist so how you can prove it through sequential don't go to for epsilon delta so you have to come up with a sequence uh, this uh, sequence minus one to the power n divided by n so usually you can say that where does this sequence converge it is converging to zero uh, at, uh, it is converging to zero but if you try to find the corresponding functional sequence what would be this it would be an oscillatory sequence this minus one to the power n and <coughs> it oscillates between minus one and one so there, there is a pure oscillation there is no decay kind of oscillation so due to that we say that the sequence is uh, definitely it is a divergent sequence this one is a divergent sequence this functional sequence is divergent so from there we can claim that signal function is, is having no limit at zero limit of signal function doesn't exist at zero so that uh, that that one is the sequential criteria so that we can so signal if you try to see the plot visualization of signal function it is coming like this one uh, in positive part it is taking one and negative part it is taking minus one and at zero signal function is taking well zero okay so uh, we will take another example limit of sine one by x so if i ask to define uh, non-existence of limit at zero through epsilon delta it would be it would be very cumbersome job so what you have to do you can prove this one with the help of sequential approach so what you do come up with two sequences xn equal to 1 by n pi and yn equal to 1 by <coughs> twice of n pi plus pi by 2 then what would be corresponding functional sequence so with respect to xn we know that both sequence converge to zero both sequence converge to zero so i think everyone might be with me both are converging to zero but if you try to see corresponding functional sequence then f of xn it is sin n pi what where does it converge what is value of sin n pi zero it is always so the this functional sequence is converging to zero and if you take uh, functional sequence y f of y n it is sin of pi by 2 plus n pi so where does it converge it is converging to one so so if you take two sequence uh, both are converging to zero the corresponding functional sequence are converging to different different 
అది రియల్ నెంబర్ సో దాట్స్ వే ఇట్ ఈస్ నాట్ దిస్ ఫంక్షన్ ఈజ్ నాట్ హ్యావింగ్ లిమిట్ అట్ ఎక్స్ ఈక్వల్ టు జీరో దట్ ఈస్ ద అనదర్ వే ఇఫ్ యూ దట్ ప్రొస్పాండింగ్ ఫంక్షనల్ సీక్వెన్స్ ఆసిలేట్ యూ వ్యారీ దెన్ సింప్లీ దట్ ఫంక్షన్ వుడ్ బి నాట్ హ్యావింగ్ లిమిట్ అట్ దట్ పాయింట్ that is the so it is very much complicated kind of the sin 1 by x if you try to see the uh, plot of this one and uh, you can see in the neighborhood of zero uh, this function is oscill oscillating highly due to high oscillation this function is not having limit at zero due to high oscillation there are definitely oscillation is everywhere for this sin function oscillation is everywhere but if you as you approach to zero oscillation is become infinitely that means if you at one point you are here then just if you shift little bit epsilon uh, or little bit delta you will be somewhere else you, you will be here near to one so that's where the oscillation is so much high that limit of this function doesn't exist at zero okay so we are going further to talk about law of limit do we have time yeah we are having <coughs> so here we will discuss few laws of limit also we will give uh, 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 some complicated kind of um, um, function and yes yeah. hmm tan uh, actually uh, uh, what is uh, you have to see the domain of that uh, even tan function is not defined at pi by 2 and minus pi by 2 so those things you have to take it take it account uh, actually tan if you try to look into tan uh, then actually basic elementary function of uh, tri elementary trigonometric function happens to be sin and cosine and if you talk about tan 1 by x tan 1 by x always we will talk about it is the <coughs> what ratio of sin 1 by x cos 1 by x cos 1 by x so it is component so there would be i think uh, uh, this limit doesn't exist so try to uh, see component wise if both limit exist then we will talk about existence of tan 1 by x what about cosine of 1 by x this will also also if you come up with two different uh, sequence x and y x <coughs> definitely those will <coughs> take in the uh, go in the similar fashion so that's why overall if both are, uh, are not existing then you will face problem so that is it. same situation would come here and the uh, elementary wise you can define it like that and also you can go one by x you have to also focus uh, while defining uh, 10 one by x on x 10 is a little bit different kind of function than sin x and cosine x sin x and cosine x universal kind of function it is defined for every real number but 10 x is not defined for every real number there are gap so you have to look into all those things as well okay okay so going further law of limit <coughs> so again <coughs> take a subset of r and suppose c is a, a limit point of the subset a then we uh, suppose <coughs> f is a function defined from a to r and uh, it is having a limit l that means very nice uh, limit of this function exist at c then this existence of limit is implying that uh, the function is corresponding function is bounded in the small neighborhood of c boundedness so that's why <coughs> you can talking like this way existence of limit is also talking many thing it is saying that function would be bounded in a delta neighborhood of c it would be bounded in the small neighborhood of c it would be bounded so that's where uh, 1 by x is having no limit at uh, zero why 1 by x is not bounded in in the small neighborhood of zero that's where, that's it, that's where it is happening so proof i have already come uh, come up with take any specific epsilon uh, suppose you take epsilon equal to 1 then what would be the, with respect to that definitely there would be delta we will get delta and uh, from here we, our interest to find bound of the function so just apply the definition of uh, <coughs> limit of a function 
it it is with respect to this epsilon we got delta if you're taking any x in the delta neighborhood of c other than c itself then that will imply that uh, this modulus would less than one because epsilon we have taken taken equal to one and if you simplify further what you will get you will see that the function is bounded above by this this function is bounded by uh, one plus modulus of l so you you are getting a bound so what is the actual bound of this function so the actual bound of this function also calculate the value of function if function is, is suppose function is defined at c then take uh, maximum of these two that <coughs> that we are calling it m f and this m would be bound of the function in the small delta neighborhood of c that it is just talking about existence of a limit of a function at a point is uh, imply it is implying that the corresponding function is bounded uh, at <laughs> in a small neighborhood of c that's why we say that one by x it is never bounded we are unable to find any small neighborhood of delta where we can say that one by x is bounded can we say that never we can't say that that's why limit of one by x is not existing at zero we are unable to find so that's why if there is a uh, limit of a function at a point then it, it simply implies that corresponding function is bounded in the in some uh, neighborhood of a small neighborhood of that point so that is the thing so that's why same example i have taken here uh, in another way you can say that limit of the function one by x at zero it doesn't exist why the, the, because this function is not bounded in any neighborhood of any small neighborhood of zero it is not bounded any a small neighborhood of zero it is not bounded that means there exists some neighborhood in which the one by x is not bounded so that's where this function is not having limit further law of limit that one is coming through algebra of we call it algebra of limit so what we do suppose we are having three functions f g h and f is having limit l g is having limit m and h is having limit <coughs> capital s then what is meaning of algebra of limit that means if you uh, having function all these function compose the function make further for, do algebra that means add and multiplication algebra means that so add these two function and anyone may suggest how a f plus g is defined i think definition might be clear to everyone how it is defined so see how this sum of these two function is acting over the argument so it is defined here this is the definition f of x plus g of x so this is the definition of sum of two functions you have to be very much clear how this sum is defined likewise also you can define difference and likewise also you can define multiplication so if all these functions are having this limit then you can also talk about this algebra sum of sum of difference of two function uh, define it and then find the limit at the same point limit would be just sum of difference of the corresponding limit likewise it would be product of the corresponding limit likewise it would be, it would be ratio of the corresponding limit but remember that you have to be attentive here, uh, here we are defining f by g it is a new function f by h is a new function and it act through argument x and like this way and <coughs> f of x divided by h of x so h of x uh, if anything come in denominator that happens to be not a real number so here that's why we are putting a condition the denominator function must be non-zero must be non-zero in the domain so that's why we have taken the condition here function is f by g remember that so that's why we are also in the process of defining uh, limit the corresponding limit of the function would be also non-vanishing it would be non-zero so then we can say that the ratio of this uh, function would have limit l by h so here you can take example uh, this example if i am asking to find uh, limit of this function x square minus 4 uh, divided by thrice of uh, x minus 6 at uh, c then how we can find limit so we can find limit here like this way just simplify this one here we are not applying uh, epsilon delta just we are taking benefit of uh, that algebra of limit so just keep on simplifying and here we are able to factor it here you can say that if you put x equal to 2 then it would be of 0 by 0 power but remember that here x always we have we are taking x from a neighborhood of 2 but x is not equal to 2 in the process of definition of uh, uh, limit of a function you had already seen that x there is one more thing that x should not be equal to 2 so that's where 0 by 0 form would not not come here so that's where uh, you are able to cancel these two terms in 
denominator and numerator you are able to why you are able to cancel x minus 2 and x minus 2 uh, because here x is not equal to 2 that's why you are able to calculate when you are trying to find limit so that, that's why cancellation is allowed after cancellation you are getting uh, the new function x plus 2 divided by 3 and find the limit and what would be limit of this one so just uh, take again apply the division rule 3 is a fixed uh, constant function so limit of 3 would be 3 itself and limit of x plus 2 would be 4 so overall we got 4 by 3 happens to be limit of the given function so that is the technique to find the law the limit of a function if it is complicated likewise also you can uh, establish what is the limit of x cube minus 4 divided by x square plus 1 so there is no if you uh, see that there is no issue such kind of issue with uh, this denominator function so easily you can find it through division rule just find the division rule and limit would be 4 by 5 division this is this is the division rule you can easily find and because this function x square plus 1 is never 0 for any x x square plus 1 for any real x it is never 0 so that's where this one is uh, always non zero limit of this one is pi that one is also non zero so that would be so easily we can find limit of this uh, ratio function like this way or rational function another name of this function we are calling it rational function there is third theorem that we are calling it a squeeze theorem everyone might be aware of this theorem It is sandwich theorem what we call it uh, yeah a squeeze theorem or sandwich theorem that means uh, take uh, any function g which sandwich or a squeeze both are just like a lemon you try to squeeze out uh, in order to get juice of that lemon so same same a squeezing kind of thing so this function is a squeezed between f of x and h of x and we are ha having information that f and h both are having same limit l then it simply implies that uh, L is also limit of the intermediate to middle function G as well. So that is the squeeze function or sandwich. So one example, if I'm asking to prove that uh, what is the limit of cosine of x minus one, one divided by x, then definitely limit is zero. But how we can prove that? So easily you can establish that uh, uh, we know that uh, from this cos uh, Taylor expansion of cosine x, we can easily establish that cosine of x falls between these two numbers but it is not sufficient to establish this one from here we can generalize we can <coughs> get another inequality like just do a little bit algebra here and you will get uh, when x is uh, if you're dividing x uh, both sides by taking positive x then you will get this inequality and if you are dividing x both side uh, with the negative uh, real number then you will get this inequality this is the inequality okay so you are getting two inequality one is this one with respect to positive real number another is uh, with respect to negative real number but remember that we, we here we haven't taken uh, x equal to zero we we just uh, focus on x is not equal to zero that way uh, in that perspective we have defined this inequality this inequality these two inequality are not true for x equal to zero but this one is true this we call it uh, uh, zero equation inequality zero this one equality inequality zero is true for x equal to zero even even for x equal to zero but uh, one and two are not true for x equal to zero so we are excluding that so that's why smartly we have to define two functions f of x and g of x based on <coughs> these uh, two inequality one and two so we come up with f of x and g of x like this way we are defining my f of x equal to minus x by 2 when x is greater than equal to 0 f of x equal to 0 when x is less than 0 and g of x equal to 0 when x is greater than equal to 0 and g of h of x equal to minus x when x is uh, less than x by 2 when x is less than 0 so usually we can uh, we try to see this function this function actually actually uh, satisfy uh, a squeeze theorem it, it is just a squeeze between these two functions cosine of x minus 1 easily and we know that if you try to find where does what is the limit of this function limit of this function would be 0 limit of this function would be also 0 if you try to find out limit of this function that's why limit of the uh, this uh, ratio function would be also 0 it will also converge to 0 so directly don't uh, this uh, don't proceed with this inequality you have to come up with new inequality okay so other thing we'll discuss in next class uh, regarding attendance just put your roll number there in comment box and further if you are having any question you can ask otherwise just i'm going to wind up today's lecture yes